Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Michelle Moreno is training us on how to skyrocket our confidence on camera with four very simple techniques. Michelle, is it okay if we start with a few get to know you questions? Sure. All right. Well, here's the first. Uh, what in, 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 do you think is the best way to master video without potentially damaging your brand? I would say the first way to start is to just start making videos for yourself. Put yourself on camera and watch them back. And each time you do ask yourself the question, how can I improve for next time? When you get to the point where you feel like you're, you, you can move on to sh actually showing those videos to somebody because you've shot 10, 20, 30, and you improve each time in this way, then you show it to a friend who's gonna be nice. When that person gives you the thumbs up, you show it to a friend, you start showing your videos to a friend who will be really judgmental and you know who they are. <laughs> and then once those people say, oh, I guess it's good enough then you can start showing your videos which are incrementally improving because you keep going and going and every time you look back and say how can i improve for next time you show them to a trusted colleague who will or client who won't drop you for a bad video and when that client or someone who is in your target market says yes then you can put them out on, on camera uh, in public or you can just cut through all that and go live <laughs> So, from the get-go. So you, you're advocating that we walk into the water slowly. Uh, you can either do it that way or you can just go live where people are very forgiving of a tough, like a bad video in the beginning. And some people will just do start going on camera and posting their videos right out of the gate. Oh, that's like cold running. turkey. That's like how I stopped smoking way it, back in the day. You can do it that way. It's smart. You have to be a little bit more brave. And I suggest if you are going to do it that way to do it with Facebook Live, because on Facebook Live, people are much more forgiving if your you know, lighting isn't perfect or if you're not perfect, you know, because you're speaking off the cuff and they're kind of expecting, they're almost waiting for stuff to go wrong. And that's why live is so okay. much more exciting than pre-recorded. Uh, so I would say if you're just going to go for it, just go all the way and start with Facebook Live. Okay. Or, LinkedIn Live. Now, um, do I assume correctly that uh, you are going to be covering your background as an actress in your talk? I will, yeah. All right. So then my last question before I pass the my baton to you is, what's the very first thing somebody should do on a video? The most important part of a video is the first seven seconds. And the most important thing that you have to do is to give people a reason to stay within those first seven seconds. You have to answer the question, what's in it for me? Because people have zero attention span. We have less of attention, less of an attention span than an, a goldfish. The human being now has about seven seconds of attention online. So if you are going to grab someone's attention, you have to come up with either an intriguing title and say, you know, today you are going to learn how to ask your boss for anything. Or, you know, today you are going to learn how to find and marry your dream man, right? So for wh whatever is important or relevant or meaningful to your audience, you need to hook them in with the opening hook within those first seven seconds and give them a reason to stay. Wonderful, great advice. Uh, audience, if you have any questions in the course of Michelle's uh, training, would you please type them into the chat? And then periodically, I will interrupt uh, Michelle and pose your questions to her. Uh, later this evening, <clears throat> Michelle's training video will be made public and uh, published onto VBN's uh, YouTube channel and you'll be sent a link so that if you want to watch it again, uh, you're welcome to do so. Uh, this means that you might not wish to take copious amounts of written notes during uh, Michelle's talk. Michelle, are you ready to wow us with your incredible <laughs> wisdom? Ready. Then take it away, rock the stage, give us your stuff. All right, well, today, we are going to learn how to look amazing, 
sound brilliant, obtain nerves just like Olympians do, and attract clients with emotional connections so that we can crush it in business and get our gerbil, the habit trail of his dreams, if that's on your vision board. Now, ever since I was a little girl, I dreamed of being a television actress, but the only people on TV with a hook nose like mine were um, these two people, Eric Estrada and the Wicked Witch of the West. But I moved to Hollywood anyway and started to pursue my dreams and I got my first big break on national TV. I became a contestant on the game show Hollywood Squares. I'd gone through a rigorous audition process and I thought because I had already been singing as a backup singer, singing around the world in stages of hundreds and, and even thousands of people as a backup singer, I thought, no problem, I got this. I arrived to the CBS studios. This was network television, millions of viewers at home watching. I got onto the set and when the camera light went on, I completely freaked out on national television in front of millions of viewers, not a hundred, not a thousand, not hundreds of thousands, millions. And in front of Whoopi Goldberg and Big Bird, Tom Bergeron, my body like almost left me and I felt like I was stuffed in cotton and I lost miserably. And then I went backstage and everybody parted like the Red Sea so that, that they could just get away from me because they were all contestants waiting their turn to go on the game show and they didn't want to catch my loser disease. So what did I do? I went home and my uncle Julio called me and he said, shit, man, I thought you were smarter than that. I cried. But then I went back into the mouth of the lion and I found mentors and I took on camera classes and I went on hundreds and hundreds of auditions in Hollywood. I took every single Hollywood hard knock that came my way. And four years later, I went from freak outs to freedom. I landed little roles. They were little, but they were on hit TV shows for millions of viewers. I did scenes with celebrities like William Shatner and Michael Chiklis and Dax Shepard. I went from freak outs to freedom on camera so that you don't have to. I learned all of the tricks and I became the go-to video confidence expert. I started teaching business leaders how to go on camera. I started going on all these shows. I've been on dozens and now I'm going to talk to you about how you get on-camera confidence on demand. All right, let's check out the chat. The no chat. Told... Oh, no chat? Okay, no, keep going. No chat, okay. no question. I'll uh, let you know if there's a oh, question. Okay, no problem. Okay, so my question to you, this audience is, why do you think we dislike the way we look? You can type your answer or just if you're watching at home, just think about it. The answer is so many images are digitally enhanced with actors having these impossible beauty standards and all these uh, influencers. It's, it's ridiculous how beautiful they look. And we're also used to looking at ourselves in the mirror. And so we're not used to seeing this ourselves on camera. So the solution is to look great. Num number one tip. Make sure your face is evenly and well lit. It's nighttime here. So right now I'm using lights. Now, if I didn't have the lights, I don't look so bad, right? But with the lights, it just makes such a difference. You also want to use natural light coming in through a window whenever possible. So if it's daytime, set your camera up, just walk around with your phone or your webcam in selfie mode and go right in front of a window, face that window, and then just look at yourself until you look fabulous and then set up your camera or your webcam right there. You can also wear more makeup than usual, especially for the ladies. But if you don't have natural light coming in through a window, use a desk lamp that has a dimmer or um, just buy some lights. I'll, I'll give you a link to some recommendations in a moment, but you want to raise the camera lens to eye level or above. In this case, the lens is hits me about here and then I point it slightly down. If I had it going straight, it would actually be above my head. 
So I have it raised up and pointed slightly down. And the reason is if you, if you actually start shooting and you're showing underneath your chin, it kind of can show your double chin and that's not a flattering angle. So you definitely want to have your camera lens at eye level or above. You also want to clean your lens with the same cloth that comes with your eyeglasses, especially if you're using your smartphone. And you want to have your face prominent in the frame. Try to get it to take up at least 50% of the height of the frame. Why? Because people connect to babies, baby animals, and other humans most. And so if your face is prominent in the frame, you have a better chance of making that human to human connection. Now, when, when you get really close on some of these webcams that are wide angle, you can see it starts to exaggerate certain features. So I have a big nose. So I definitely want to take a look and just sit back far enough that no distortion happens. You're going to do the same. Also, you want to avoid one of the biggest mistakes that I see, and that is called the newbie gap. And that's when you're like way down here and there's a huge gap between the top of your head and the top of your frame. There's no reason for that because you are going to situate yourself. If you have a webcam on your laptop, then you're just going to put some books underneath so that you can raise that camera lens to eye level above. And then you're going to get your face prominent and not much room between the top of your head and the top of the frame. Also clean up your background so that you look professional and that you have items in the background that reflect your brand. Now we're going to talk about wardrobe do's and don'ts. Before you go there, are you ready for your first couple of questions? Sure. All right. What if I'm put on the spot on Zoom and it is live on YouTube? Uh, I don't understand the question. So you're on YouTube. Chris, would you please unmute and uh, explain a little more? Sure. So. Actually, my debut on YouTube was um, was actually through Zoom. I was at a, a, a one of those uh, online uh, networking events, um, and there's a webinar, and uh, I ended up uh, uh, just uh, there's a question. I ended up just talking. It was a Zoom that was being recorded onto YouTube, and that's how I made that's actually how I made my debut. So. Uh, I don't need it anymore, but it might help the next person. So your question is, how do you just suddenly get confidence when you're put on the spot? Um, yes. Yes, uh, I said, what if I am put on the spot on Zoom? Yeah, well, I think you always want to talk about areas that you're an expert in. So if somebody throws a question on you at you, the first thing you want to do is connect your eyes to the lens, locate that lens. Don't answer and look at yourself the whole time. If you're put on the spot, connect your eyes to the lens and give them an answer that speaks to what you shine in as an expert. And even if they give you a question that you can't answer, then just say, well, I don't know about that. But what I do know is if you get really stuck and you don't know the answer, always have a few bullet points of your expertise prepared in the event you ever are put on the spot so that if somebody throws a question at you, you can say, I don't know about that, but I do know. And then you put forth your expert best points. Make sense? Next question, Michelle. Uh, uh -huh. it's, really a, it's really a statement, but it also carries a question within it. Okay. Uh, so maybe on my next video, I can include my puppy golden retriever. What are your people, thoughts, Michelle, on people, the wisdom of including pets in your videos? People love animals. If you have an animal as many times as you can get that animal to cross, that you can get them in the animal in your lap, I'm telling you, if you could just do a little one bullet point expertise video where it's 30 seconds of you holding that animal and giving a pointer, it's gonna be like your most popular <laughs> video ever. Definitely bring your animals into the mix. It not only makes people relate to you, but it also shows some of your personality and people want to do business with other people, especially in the Rona, if they're totally lonely and alone on the Zoom. So without question, experiment, see how, what kind of type of engagements, if, as long as it works with your brand, do it. Michelle, what are your thoughts on subtitles and videos? Are they a must these days? 
These days, they are a must. And the reason is people are so overwhelmed and it's really hard to get people's attention. So captions, because there's something mesmerizing about them, will grab your attention. And it also brings in those people who happen to be doing something else and they maybe they don't want the audio on, like maybe their kid is next to them studying and they will watch your video if, it's, if they're in a situation where they can't have the audio. So it, 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 in, it includes more people and it's also mesmerizing, mesmerizing to watch. Which is a better angle, horizontal with webcam or vertical with cell phone, or those have different purposes and effects? Those have different purposes and effects. Vertical videos are great for something like Instagram stories. Um, and also on LinkedIn right now, vertical videos are really hot because they look different and they're just, they're just catch, they're very hot right now. Uh, I prefer personally the look of the wide angle just as a personal preference. And also you wanna use that for, for putting videos out on let's say YouTube, um, Facebook, uh, and so it, it, it depends on the format and it depends on what you're doing, but uh, both are popular. And the final question for this round, what are the best lighting options if there's no natural light? Um, I have some suggestions. If you want to go to kit.co slash Michelle Moreno, um, I'll bring that link up later in the, in the presentation. Um, I think that if one way to start is just to get these, um, there, it's two of them that I have. They're these desk lamps that are just small, lightweight LED. It's $50 for the pair. And the reason I like them is that they're adjustable and you can, you can raise this up and down. You can angle this. It has different gels with different colors. So you can put blue or red if you want to change the lighting color. And I have two of them so that I can put them on the side and above so that I don't have the ring. You know how sometimes the ring lights go glare right into your glasses with these. I never have that problem because they are above me and they are pointed and angled down. You see that? They're, they're angled down and above. No further questions. Well, there are, but I'm going to hold them for the next pause in your presentation. Okay. So now I'm going to go start flying. You want to wear colors that flatter your skin tone, not colors that wash you out. So just take your clothing, put it under your neck, and see what colors are flattering. This color happens to be super flattering on me and I wear it all the time. You also wanna wear form-fitting clothes. Clothes that are solid, that are um, stretch material is helpful because it's more form-fitting, um, but also you don't wanna wear baggy clothes because wherever you cut off at the bottom of the lens of the frame is what the, 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 the um, viewer imagines that you're that wide and they just fill it in. So they think you're really wide wherever you cut off in the frame. So don't wear baggy clothes unless you want them to think that you're that wide as you keep going down because the eye will naturally uh, fill that in. Um, and also you wanna make sure you don't wear any super tight patterns like houndstooth pictured uh, just underneath me or this pattern that's vibrating. Um, you wanna test them on camera before you wear them because some tight uh, lined patterns will vibrate. Um, and you want to wear bright colors that pop you from the background. So as you can see, I'm really popping from this sort of yellow tone with this bright pink top. Um, if you wear clothes that are the same as the background, you're going to blend in and that doesn't look that hot on camera. So I want you to, um, if, if you're watching this live, you can put it in the chat or if you're watching um, on the YouTube, why do you think we dislike the way we sound? Think about that for a second. Why do we dislike the way we sound? We are used to hearing our voices as sound traveling away from us from inside our head and sound coming towards us sounds different, foreign. So the solution is to warm up with warm-ups because if you have tension here, you, you have restriction, it doesn't allow the air or the resonance to flow. And when you are relaxed right here, you have a more authoritative, confident sound. So you want to do a physical warm up like uh, prancer size, yoga, jumping jacks, and to ensure your neck and shoulders are, um, if to ensure that they're relaxed, what you want to do is the following shoulder scrunch. What you're going to do is you're going to scrunch your shoulders up as you breathe in and then breathe out and relax them. Breathe in, 
scrunch your shoulders up and then <sighs> breathe out and make sure there's no tension here when you go on camera. And then here's a vocal warm up that a lot of pros will use. You breathe in and it's called the siren and you start from high up. Breathe in <sighs> and then you go down and back up. Breathe in <sighs> that's called the siren and one more called the raspberry, which is like this. Babies do it all the time. <sighs> Okay, and that allows, oh my gosh, I'm spitting all over that camera. And that allows the air to flow. So as long as this area right here, your neck and shoulders is relaxed, you're gonna have a much, much better time of it um, when you go on camera. Okay, is my, is my uh, slides back on? Your slides are back on, all is good. And if you want to uh, check out my kit.co slash Michelle Moreno, just go to that link, kit.co slash Michelle Moreno uh, that you see below. And I have some equipment suggestions of the things that I use, um, like the, you know, the, the USB mic that I'm using right now uh, and uh, some other fun things for either the laptop or the smartphone. But if you go there, you'll see starter kit, you'll see light recommendations and more. Okay. Would you like to take a few more questions? Sure. Is it more important to show more of my background that lists my services or to show more of my face? It's always more important to show your face because people connect to other human beings more than they connect to things. So if you have a baby or a baby animal, like a baby panda, definitely want to show that. But if you don't have that, then the next best thing is you, right? So you're going to show your face prominently. Can you repeat the brand of the lamps? Uh, yes. If you go to kit.co slash Michelle Moreno and hit lights, they are the, um, oh gosh, you know what? I'll have to look that up at the end because it, it doesn't say on here. But it does say kit.co slash Michelle Moreno slash lights. You'll see them. There's two of them and they, they look like this and they're called uh, USB lights, I think. What do you think about having captions and a voiceover on videos or is it better to do one or the other? Um, when you say voiceover, I mean, I mean, captions are the written part of the spoken. Are you saying do captions only and then or a voiceover only i would say do both signum would you like to unmute and explain your question a little better hi thanks roger um i think and my name is cheatham and um michelle you answer hi, my cheatham. question hi yeah i was just wondering whether like when you make videos whether I'm, initially i was making uh either using captions or just voiceover but somebody mentioned using both and I've gotten mixed feedback on that. Some people say, don't do that, it's confusing. Some people like it. So I was wondering what you thought. Well, I usually do captions which, which are strictly a uh, translation of what I'm saying into text. If you're saying one thing and then using words that are saying something else, I could see that would be confusing. But if your captions are simply a reflection of what you're saying, I think that's great. It's great to better to have both. Okay, got it. Thank you so much, Michelle. Sure. Hector, thank you for posting the brand of the lights. New, uh, newer two-pack dimmable 5,600K USB LED video light. Thank you. Thank you for looking that up. Cindy, do you have a cordless mic to recommend? I teach yoga. A cordless. You know, I haven't had the best luck with the cordless, although I do uh -huh. know a yoga teacher who's using one. So if you want to send me an email, uh, I'll put my email at the end, mm at michellemoreno.co, and I'll, I'll ask her what she's using. Cindy, it so happens that I'm the resident genius on cordless mics, and the <laughs> absolute best investment you can make is in a Rode, R-O-D-E. It's uh, not inexpensive. Uh, it's uh, a couple hundred dollars American, but you have a 200-yard uh, range, and the sound quality is superb. Okay, so it's the Rode Wireless. Yep, Rode uh, Wireless. I'm going to put that in my kit. No Thank further you. questions. Michelle, back to you. So We're, if you're, we're a great team here. We're, oh. we're knocking it out of the park. <laughs> 
So if you say to yourself, I'm still a little bit freaked out. Okay, let me tell you the real reason so many people are freaked out by the camera and what makes your body shrink. It actually is your prehistoric hard wiring because when we traveled as pack animals, being separated from the group meant death. You were either starved because you couldn't come up with any food on your own or you got eaten by a predator. So when we're alone in front of a group, like even if we're doing public speaking, our instinct is to shrink and hide. Our body goes into flight or fight mode because we fear the saber toothed tiger who can now see us because we're so darn visible and alone. And today we fear the cyber tooth tiger, AKA the internet. So what are your top fears when you go on camera? Think about that. What, when you're standing in front of that lens, do, do any negative thoughts arise? We often have a confidence crisis whenever we try something new. And when you stand in front of that camera, these are all the things that I've heard my clients say and the things that I've said to myself. I look like a troll, oh, I've said that. I sound like an idiot. Why am I so nasally? Do I have anything of value to say? People are gonna find out I'm an imposter. Oh, I'm not good enough for this. So what you can do is you can tame your inner critic. It's time to make a video. Put your inner critic in the back seat behind plexiglass so she can't make a peep. She can come along for the ride, but she can't drive. And you cannot listen to her. She can come out when the shoot is over because there's a time when you need her by your side. And that's the time to watch the replay because she's a master. She'll tell you faster how to improve. Just ask her. She might drive you cray cray, but that's okay, okay. Because when you tame her, you'll have a hella big digital payday. Okay, tame your inner critic for the day, love her and then send her on her way. Bye, 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 bye. All right, thank you very much, Roger. I saw you bopping to the beat. But we also fear judgment from girls like these. So what do you do? Do what Olympians do and make nerves your friend. Transform whatever emotions arise in your body into what you need for your performance just like Olympians do. They take nerves and they turn it into excitement and nerves indicate that you care. And actually this TED talk by Kelly McGonigal taught me that stress, if you use it to your advantage and if you know that you can use stress and make stress your friend, it actually helps you. So your pounding heart, your shaking hands actually can bring you more energy and brain power. So this is how you do it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna roll your shoulders back when you go on camera and you're gonna assume very wide body language. You're gonna use your extra energy to speak clearly, loudly, and to remember your talking points. And if all else fails, smile for a full minute before you go on camera to create the biology of happiness and warmth. So if you really wanna have that warm, inviting energy Think about something that super warms, that warms your heart, like, you know, your kid dancing or whatever it is that does that for you before you go on camera. And now I want to talk about another one of the very simple techniques to really, really attract clients. And that's building trust with emotional connection. As you know, we got to get that like, no trust factor generating if we want people to take the next step with us. And what motivates an action? Really, it's a feeling, right? It's a feeling that we get like, oh, I really like that person. I'm gonna call them because they're really gonna help me with my issue. If you don't like somebody, are you really gonna call them to help you in with a service or a product? You're not going to, you're gonna avoid them. So unless you have a baby panda in your budget, you are the one responsible for making an emotional connection on camera. It has to be you. You create that emotional response because you can't always have your animals with you when you go to serve clients. So you've got to learn how to do that. And viewers are expecting emotions from their screens. They're, they can go watch a, a video. They can go watch The Crown. They can go watch, you know, their fav favorite episode of The Kardashians or, you know, whatever show they love. And this, if they are ready to leave you at a moment's notice for some show that's gonna make them laugh or cry, you better believe you have to make a human to human connection. Your biggest competition is not Susie Q in your space, it's kittens and the Kardashians. And so one of the biggest mistakes I see, which is really simple to correct, 
is that people never look in the lens. They're so busy watching their own video, their own selfie video, that they never actually connect their eyes to that lens. And that's a big mistake. Even if it's not the whole time, you don't have to stare in the lens the whole time, but you have to at some point connect them to that lens, especially when you have an important point to make. So as much as you possibly can at key points, connect your eyes to that lens. And imagine that there's someone inside. This is especially good for introverts. Someone who brings out the best in you. Somebody you know is on your side, whether that's your ideal client, your favorite client. And if you don't have a favorite client and there's somebody else who you can imagine that really brings out the best in you, then just put them inside the lens. If you want to use a post-it to mark where the lens is, especially if you have a tiny lens and you don't know where it is, you can put a photo of your ideal client. This is from one of my clients. She put the photo of her ideal client right over that lens. She cut a hole out where the nose is. And now when she's doing her presentation, she's speaking to that one person and connecting with their needs and serving them, just like she would serve a client. You also want to be a friend at a cafe, you know? So I'm going to um, stop this share because I am going to um, talk to you about being a friend at a cafe. It's really just that intimate. Can you still see me? Yep. See you full screen. Okay, great. So you want to recreate create being a friend at a cafe. Remember that when we went to cafes and maybe in Canada, you're still going. Remember you'd speak to that person, you'd be like, oh, I've got something to tell you and you're all excited because it was your best friend or, you know, somebody who really you were dying to talk to. That's who you can imagine is in that lens or just recreate that feeling. Recreate what it's like to have a great conversation in real life, but now you're having it with the camera lens and you're going to recall all and replicate those juicy conversations that you have had with people. Now, are you staring the lens the whole time when you go to the cafe? No, you're, you know, you're looking around, you're thinking, but just make sure that you do that. And when you really, really get down to starting to make videos, I have great daily exercise for you. Just hit record and speak to someone you love who brings out the best in you. Watch it back. Just say whatever springs to your mind, watch it back and then say, how can I improve for next time? Right? So what you learned today is that you are enough. You don't have to hide from the cyber tooth tiger. You have to just use your nerves as your friend. Roll your shoulders back. Use those nerves to smile. Use those nerves to remember your talking points and to have that energy and enthusiasm. And guess what? If you appear confident, the trolls will not attack. And even if they do, they are not your peeps. They are not meant to work with you. You have to be judged and visible if you want to do business right now. Everything is happening online. And being a leader today and for the foreseeable future and possibly forevermore means showing up on camera, looking amazing, sounding brilliant, and making that emotional connection. Decide who you're talking to, decide the exact situation that they're in, have empathy for them, decide that you're gonna help them and serve them just as you would your favorite client in that moment. You're going to put them into the lens and you are going to hit record. I want you to become the leader the world needs on camera. Four quick questions. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on optimal video length, says Shauna? As you said, it's hard to get people's attention. Optimal video length is however long it's going to take you to get out something that shows that you are an expert in a clear and concise manner. That said, the optimal video link that seems to be working right now is 30 seconds. So if you have one tip to share where you can go on camera and, and just give one bullet point, get in, give your opening hook, which is gonna really get uh, some kind of intriguing thing that's gonna tell them why they should stay, give your tip and then get out within 30 seconds and then just post that all over social video, then that would be a great place to start. 
Now, YouTube is a little bit different because YouTube people are typing into the Google search engine something that they want to learn how to do, like, you know, how to flat iron my hair when if it's curly or how to use the new, uh, you know, Pixel 5. So 30 seconds might not be enough time to teach somebody how to flat iron their hair, right? So it depends on the length, but it depends on the purpose of the video. But that said, one tip in 30 seconds would be a great place to start. And that's a very hot format right now. Thank you. From Adrian, what if I'm in a serious situation where I need to be seen as the authority figure? Then you need to make videos that you share your expertise with very meaningful and relevant lessons to your audience. So if you know your ideal client, what is going to be relevant for them? What is gonna be meaningful for them? What is going to be useful for them? What is gonna make them laugh or cry? So you have that sort of value that you're showing because you know your audience and you know their problems. Value, which Tony Robbins spoke about in terms of education, empowerment and entertainment, it really comes in those three forms. So you're gonna pick one. If it's gonna be the entertaining video where you're gonna talk about something fun where they just get to know and like you, that's great. But if you really wanna share your expertise um, as well, then you're gonna to have to make sure it has a value on a deeper level that can get them to the next level or that has some type of meaning for them that's gonna empower them to take that next step. Michelle wants to know where you got your Fuchsia shirt. Fuchsia top, I think. Nordstrom, they ran out, but um, I guess I could, I could, I can look up the. Uh, that's okay. That's probably yeah. enough. Okay. A uh, question from Jocelyn: Where do you look if in a one-to-one -one meeting with someone, i.e., you want to look at their face on screen versus look at the camera lens, the webcam lens? Okay. The brand is Gibson, by the way, of this berry coat. Um, the one-on-one -on -one situation is that you must look at them to receive them. And for all the time that you need to receive them, you must get their body language and receive them fully. But when you have an important point to make or when you're mostly talking, that's when you would connect your eyes to the lens. But if you have to look at them the whole time because you're doing something where you have to understand their reaction and read their body language and look at them the whole time and then every once in a great while, when you make an important point, put your eyes to the lens. Hector wants to know if you ever use a virtual background. I am not a big fan of virtual backgrounds only because I have very curly hair and it doesn't do well and you can see the little lines and it's, it's obvious that it's a virtual background. So, and, and I recommend that people just find a spot where they can put some stuff in the background that shows their personality, because I think it's more important to be real and to be a human being. That said, if your place is a hot mess, then a virtual background is going to be better than a hot mess. Um, I was thinking about my own hair and the fact that virtual backgrounds work just fine for me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Question from Lynn. Uh, what are your thoughts about colored clothing on camera? I love colors. And if you're doing social videos, it's very hard to get people to stop scrolling in their feed. So if you can wear something really bright that pops, and if you can even do some kind of visual hook right at the top. So for example, if I have a 30 second, second video and it lives on social media and I want somebody to stop their scroll, then right at the start of the video, I might be like, right? Because they're going to go, oh, that's different than a talking head. So anything that you can do that isn't just this, like today I'm going to talk about da 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 or three reasons that you want to put your slides in, right? Because it's different and it might make somebody stop or you grab the dog and put the dog in and then send them away. Makes sense. So that's called a visual hook right at the top and that's what you would when you would want to do it from but Meg, I'm, from Meg I'm self-conscious about my accent I can make myself understood but people say sometimes they get distracted or lose focus how much forgiving is the general online audience for English as second language people you are who you are and you're not going to change and if you're trying to get ideal clients to work with you they're going to have to work with your accent 
And in fact, I just um, hired a coach. She has a very thick accent. At first, I was like, I don't know if I can hang with this accent because it was so thick. And she wowed me with the value that she provided in her webinar. And after a while, it started to get easier and easier to understand her because, you know, once you hear somebody for a little while, you start to understand them. And I ended up hiring her. So you are there to attract the people who like you, who like, know, and trust you. And if you have an accent and you cannot change the fact that you have that accent, then you can practice the, the accent, the part, the words that are particularly difficult or that are particularly hard to understand. And you've got to practice, practice, practice those specific words. But the rest of the time, you don't worry about it because you're going to repel some and you're going to attract others. And those people who are going to work with you are going to need to work with your accent as well. And you need to show up the same on camera as you are off camera to attract those ideal clients. And finally, oh, no, not finally. Uh, if there is another person walking by and causes distraction, does the virtual background block that person? If the green screen is in front of the person, yes. If the green screen is in the back, like just a wall, then no. <laughs> Great. I think that they, I think that's going to get messed up if they walk through, right? No further <laughs> questions. Back back to you, Michelle. Okay, so um, so back to the uh, PowerPoint. And so, can you see this uh, slide? Yep. You okay. I'd like to go full screen. There we go. Perfect. Um. Okay. So the oh, so today I have um a program for those of you who want to continue learning with me. It's called Confidence on Camera. Uh, it's $97. And the great thing about it is that it's a three module program, but it also includes a feedback on your video from me. And this really is worth, that's worth alone $300 or more because of my trained eye. My clients say that it's the feedback that they get from me on their videos, which outlines exactly how you can improve your performance and message, that that's what makes my coaching so brilliant. So for those of you who decide to get the $97 program, do the modules and create the video and turn it into me, like, or just don't bother doing it because that's the real value is my eyes on your video. Yes, it also gives you so much good stuff and more, but you know, the bare bones basics of how to really look how to good, how to really feel confident, uh, but also that a session with me is, is really going to make it shine. And so um, that link is going to be uh, something that Roger's going to put into the chat. But I can also um, share a video of three of uh, my clients. Can I do that? Uh, the case studies of three clients that I helped? Absolutely. Far away. Oh, I, wait. I forgot to hit share sound. OK, so share the screen. Share the computer sound. OK, ready? No confidence. I needed to transform and Michelle helped me do that without question. When I first started her course, I was recording seven minute videos that seemed to not have a point. So now I'm able to record video messages that are clear, that are concise. Which led to more media coverage for Tiffany and more led to prestigious a lot more media clients coverage. for the boutique agency she runs with her husband. And more clients what your course did for me was it not only equipped me with the technical skills that i needed like the correct camera and lighting and microphones and that sort of stuff but it also allowed me to examine what my true message was as well as the most effective way to bring that message across on camera and the result was that my last opt-in video converted at 60 percent so not only did Tony's meaningful video double the conversion on her opt-in page, but she's now making videos and skyrocketing her visibility with appearances on other people's summits. This woman is amazing. Her program is amazing. It transforms you on camera so that you can help others connect with you and know exactly what it is that you do, why you're doing it, and how it's going to benefit them. Jasper went from unsure and unfocused on camera to loving every moment in front of the lens, which led to multiple speaking engagements, her own online events, and multiple high ticket clients. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle, we had a question. I'm assuming I answered it correct. Was the $97 American dollars or Canadian dollars? Uh, American. 
American. Okay, I was correct. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't, if you want me to um, review a different video other than the one I'm I'm assigning in the course, I'm also happy to do that. Um, and I'll give you feedback not only in your perform performance but also on your messaging. Great. No further questions. Okay. Well, I think that's it. That's my. That's my. Kaboom, kabang, kabam. We're done. Well, you, you did a lovely kaboom, kabang, kabam. <laughs> uh, Is there a proven? A, oh, I have a question here. Is there a proven strategy to? Yep. Uh, the the questions will now come in thick and fast. Oh, I oh, will okay. just leave you to respond to them all verbally. Okay. So what do I do? Uh, just just speak. Uh, the first one is, is there a proven strategy to avoid the ums? Uh, okay. So those are crutch words. And the reason we use crutch words such as um, uh, is so that our brain can catch up to what we want to say. So the, 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 I don't, I can't remember exactly how it works, but we're trying to stall for time <laughs> in order to get our uh, thoughts together. One of the ways you can do it is put a timer on for let's say 30 seconds and then hit record and grab like a random, like put a pile of 10 random subjects in a bowl and pull one and then just start talking about it for those 30 seconds. So you pull the, you pull the card out, you hit record, you put a timer, and you just talk about it for 30 seconds. And then watch the video back and count how many times you used that crutch word. It's better if, if you can put yourself in some kind of a high pressure situation because that's when you're likely more likely to use those crutch words. But just pretend that you only have 30 seconds to show something meaningful and, and count how many times you use it. And then reward yourself every single time you're able to reduce the number of crutch words or punish yourself <laughs> for every crutch word you use by doing something like knee deep bends or something that you hate to do like a push up <laughs> for every crutch word that appears in the video. Um, and so you turn it into a game, you learn how to do it fewer and fewer and you can either use the carrot or the stick approach. Uh, question from me. It's about the speed of speaking. Uh, uh, some people, um, well, what is the optimum pace of delivering words? The optimum pace is whatever speed that you're going to be confident and comfortable. If you are a slow speaker, then it does behoove you to learn to speak a little faster. If you're getting feedback from people that it's just they're, you're sort of losing them because they're falling asleep then what you're going to need to do is that you're going to have to add more tones into your voice. If you're going so slow that you're getting feedback that it's too slow, then you will learn how to, you're going to need to learn how to speak faster or start practicing to learn faster. However, people can just put your video on one and a half or two times speed. And I highly suggest that if you're a slow talker, that you create your videos in some kind of a format that allows a speed like YouTube, for example, you can increase the speed. So I watch everything on two times the speed on YouTube. So it's not an issue. So as long as you put out your videos in a format that people can speed up, it's really not gonna be an issue and tell them how. Uh, Michelle, what are your thoughts on music in the background? I think music can be very helpful if it's a promotional video or something that's super short, like, a minute, 90 seconds, um, especially if it's a sales video or something promotional, like a brand, like showing your brand, like an intro video, I think it can be very effective, but any longer than a minute, two minutes. I think if you're getting into a five minute video, I think the music is a bit much personally. We have no further questions. Audience, this is a great opportunity since we have another nine minutes left. Wow. Nine minutes of Michelle's precious time. So let's uh, capitalize. Let's exploit the opportunity. Oh, my goodness. Well, not nine minutes. I, I must have really powered through that. <laughs> let's see. Um, it, it, did, it didn't appear that you were rushing. You were well paced. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. Uh, Adrian wants to know if you could please talk a little bit more about uh, eye contact 
And Lynn wants to know what started you in the business of speaking. I think Lynn arrived late, so she didn't hear your introductory comments. Okay, well, to answer so maybe Lynn's... Adrian, the eye contact, and then Deb, what do you think of being a singer helped you become a great speaker? And Adrian wants to know about wearing jewelry. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of questions. Let me answer the singer first, and then you might have to remind me. One of the most brilliant ways, and in the $97 uh, training that I uh, gave the link to, I do have a lesson on this. One of the most brilliant ways to become more interesting on camera is to learn how to use more notes in your voice. If you're the type of speaker who really uses only one note, and most people really do only speak with about two or three notes so that everything sounds monotone, what happens is that you start to put people to sleep because if you're on the same tone the whole time and if you never use any pauses and you just keep talking and talking and talking and you never stop, there is no way for anybody to really understand you and they start to lose you and they start to be able to track you. They stop being able to track you. You hear how horrible that was to listen to? <laughs> so instead, you wanna use pauses for emphasis and you wanna vary the speed of your speaking. And so you can suddenly uh, speed up and talk very quickly and then all of a sudden you can stop. And that makes people listen. You can do a pattern disrupt, which means all of a sudden you're doing a presentation and then you disappear. And then people think, what is she doing? And it kind of, or you, hey everybody. And then suddenly people go, oh, and they, they, they stop looking at their phones. So if you want somebody to pay attention to you, you do these types of rhythmic things. And being an actress and a singer made it really easy for me to talk in many different tones when I need to. And when I feel that I'm losing my audience. And I also have all this acting background where I would do something like, oh, really? I think that's really funny because here I am today talking to you. Right? So I'm just used to doing that stuff on stage. So it's very easy for me to translate that into a more exciting speaking gig. And then to answer why I started doing speaking and helping business leaders, it was because when I was an actress, my husband came to me and said, Moreno, for 15 years, I've been the breadwinner and you're only making $12,000 a year for our entire marriage. And I was like, yeah, when you married me, I was an actress and actually that's a lot of money for an actress. And he was like, you need to do better. And so that's why I started helping business leaders. <laughs> and then what was the other question, Roger? <laughs> I think you should take on a role as the new godfather. The other questions, what about <laughs> eye contact? What about jewelry? Uh, how do you oh, eye contact and mind jewelry. from going blank? Let's do eye contact and jewelry, then mind going blank. Okay, eye tech, contact jewelry. Okay, eye contact. So what you want to do is you want to make the lens like somebody's face. And the next time you have a conversation in person with somebody who brings out the best in you, you want to start paying attention to how often your eyes connect with theirs. You want to pay attention to how you feel when you're with them. You wanna pay attention to your body language. And then what you wanna do is just recreate that when you go on camera. So you can see as I'm talking to you right now, I'm really putting myself in a cafe and I'm not gonna really look at the lens the entire time. And so it comes off more natural. Uh, it may come off a little bit more uh, standoffish, but you can play around with it and you guys tell me what you think. Do you like it better when I'm like cafe, Michelle, and I'm not looking at you the entire time? Or do you like it better when I'm like presentation with the slides and really looking into the lens? You tell me what you think. <laughs> um, and then uh, the second question, jewelry. With jewelry, what you always wanna do is frame your face because this is what you want to call attention to on camera. So if you have jewelry, or a neckline that can frame your face, great. Um, if you have a, a, wanna have an illusion that you're thinner than you are, then what you wanna do is you wanna create a vertical strip with your clothing. So you can wear something like this and then make a stripe. And then this stripe, the fact that it's vertical makes me look thinner because it's a stripe. So put a jacket over it, 
and create something long and vertical so that the line looks like this. What was the next question? The next question was from Vivian. Also, also tones, you said earlier, if you talk slowly, add more tones. Can you say more? About uh, tones, uh, vocal, I think she means vocal variety. Oh, vocal variety. Okay, yes. So what you wanna do is you wanna practice vocal variety by taking any kind of a book, anything. Like I could do it with this chat right now. What are your thoughts? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna read. And the only thing you're gonna focus on is using as many notes as you possibly can. So you're gonna read. So puppy golden retriever, guaranteed connection. Michelle, what are your thoughts on these subtitles on videos? Are they a must these days? Because really, I don't know what the angle is. So what you do is you practice. You can record yourself maybe for about 20, 30 seconds and then listen back and count like how many notes did I get in there? And then each time you try to speak with more notes and more notes. And if you start making the conscious effort to not use three notes or four notes, but to use like 10 notes when you talk, you'll be amazed at how much more exciting you sound to the listener. Uh, going blank. What do you do to stop yourself going blank? I always have bullet points as a backup. So my, I highly recommend that you get in the habit of putting your bullet points, let's say on a post-it, right? As a reminder of what you're doing so that in the event that you totally forget, right? and your mind is blank, you take it and you put it right underneath the lens. You tape it as right underneath. This is right underneath. So that when you forget, you don't have to go over here and look to the side. If you forget, you just look slightly down. Don't move your head. Just move your eyes slightly down, get the next bullet and then look up. There's also you know, use of teleprompters, which I'm pretty good at using teleprompters. It takes a little practice um, and I like them. Not everybody does, but you can also use a teleprompter. Uh, but I, I recommend the bullets underneath because you'll be able to make videos really fast that way. Question from Adrian. What's the best way to practice reading your notes, bullet points and camera without making it obvious? And if you lose track, what's the best way to put yourself back on track? I think you just answered that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So what you want to do is have the notes as close to the lens as possible. And again, the way you, you hide that you're looking at notes is to put them as close to the lens and then move your eyes like you're thinking. Like, hmm, I wonder. Sometimes I put them to the side and it even looks more like you're thinking if they're over here. And then you look back like, well, you know, because every single day, is like Easter for me. And so I'm saying like Easter for me, but really what I'm doing is getting the next bullet point over here in my notes. And if all else fails, then you just use your notes and say, okay, let me check out what my next point is. Okay, what I really wanted to tell you was, and then you keep talking and just show people that you're using notes when all else fails. <laughs> Question from Karen. In my business, I work with people who are grieving. I'm a grief recovery specialist. Wow. I'm Good attempting my promo video, but I feel uncomfortable because I don't want to show too much excitement, but my tone is so compassionate that it seems too soft. What do you recommend? I think in videos, there are times when you're talking about somebody's struggle and then there are times when you're talking about your solution. And if you have a serious topic like grieving, when you're empathizing with your ideal client's situation, then you're gonna be really literally like you're there with them in the room. And so if your promo video is has that serious topic, then you are really speaking to that person in their utmost stage of grief when you're talking about their problem. But when you get to your solution, what you wanna do is show a little hope, throw in a little bit of the smile. And you still, you know, you still wanna have that warmth, but you also wanna have the enthusiasm and the hope that your solution provides. So you really wanna take them on that emotional journey. 
So for me, I'm taking you from freak out to freedom, right? So if I'm talking about the freak outs, I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna be with you and I'm gonna talk about how horrible it is. And I'm not gonna have a big smile on my face because I know what it's like to freak out, right? Or I'm gonna be all nervous and panic. But then when I get to my solution, I'm gonna talk about being free on camera. So as long as you take them on the appropriate emotional journey and you're really there and present with that person, your promo video is gonna be awesome. Uh, Michelle, it's a little after eight and the questions are still coming. Are you still willing to stick around and answer them? Sure, did I answer that person's question? Uh, yes, you did. Okay. Next, next question is, Michelle, you just took your glasses off. Were you trying to make a point? Ooh. Question from Swap. I, I wasn't, but don't you think it works? <laughs> so I'll assume the answer is yes. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't intentional, but now that I know that it that's something, I, I'm gonna use it. Thank you. Hand gestures. How much should I use? Do you want to be an Italian or do you want if to be you are little... naturally an Italian, then use your hands. Uh, okay, like if you're a hand talker, I'm a hand talker. Okay. And there are times when I move around so much that is actually distracting. And my mother-in-law said, uh, your videos are okay, but you might want to just like calm down a little bit. And I thought to myself, I could take my mother-in-law's advice or I can just be me. And that way, when the clients come on the Zoom and they see it's really me and I'm talking to them and I'm talking with my hands and I'm doing what I naturally do, they're not going to feel like they're going to trust me. They're not going to feel like they got bamboozled. They're going to be see, oh, that's the same girl that was on the video. So I suggest if you're a hands talker, then use your hands. If you're not a hands talker, it's no problem. If you want to use your hands less because people are telling you that it's actually distracting, then what you want to do is you want to hold your hands in your lap intentionally to keep them still. And there are times when I do like on shoots, like on camera, like jobs, where the director's like, you need to stop moving your head. And you better believe when I'm on a set and the, act, the director tells me to stop moving my head, I do it. So it's not that you can't train yourself out of bad habits, but don't be afraid of being you. How, oh, another question about glasses. Is it better to not have glasses if you don't need them? I mean, if I didn't need these, I wouldn't be wearing them. And the reason is I think that, I mean, what do y'all think? Do you think, do you, do you see, see me more connected to you in any way? Does it seem any less connected because I have my glasses on? Can you see my eyes better with the glasses on? I think if you don't need them, don't wear them. But if you need them, it's not a big deal. You just have to be the same on camera as you are off camera. How do you protect your throat? I talk a lot and get hoarse throat all the time. How do you protect your throat? The most important thing to do is to drink a lot of water. Um, dry throat, if you're not hydrated, can be one of the worst things for your vocal cords. So make sure that you drink a lot of water and also make sure that you use your diaphragm if you're speaking for a really long time. Get used to um, when you speak, okay, I'm wearing a t-shirt, but when you speak, you really want to engage the diaphragm and push more air through uh, so that you're not relying on your vocal cords, but you're actually pushing, tensing up the diaphragm and using it to push air through. And you also want to make sure that this area is really relaxed. So scrunch up those shoulders, breathe in and relax. Let's call it a night. It's uh, 8.06. Uh, Michelle, on behalf of uh, all your audience, myself included, thank you for sharing so much incredibly valuable experience-based uh, tips with us. Just great. And audience, on behalf of Michelle and I, thank you so much for giving us of your Monday evening. Uh, for many of you, I look forward to seeing you again uh, tomorrow night. Michelle, do you have any closing words that you'd like to share with your fans and followers? Well, I want to say thank you, Roger. Thank you, Vancouver Business Network. And folks, go forth with video confidence. It's a wrap. Good night, all.
Bye-bye. Bye, Michelle.